Makes the coolest sound. Yeah. G'day, g'day, I'm Corey Wild and welcome to the Wild Wild West. Check out these spectacular sandstone structures left after thousands of years of erosion in this beautiful place. We're in New Mexico and we're about to go herping on a wildlife adventure. Let's go and see what we can find. Check this out, this is another species, local species that's found in this area. And this one's called a bull snake. They say he's a subspecies of the gopher snake and one of the largest snakes found in North America. This guy here loves cruising around and checking out rodent holes and he'll go down those rodent holes and he'll have his dinner and then he'll curl up in there and go to sleep. So thanks to these guys, a lot of our populations of, of rodents are kept in check. Um, he's actually got killed scales, which is interesting. To me, that tells me that it helps him constrict and hang on to prey as well. He, he, does, he does get up to eight feet long and up to five kilos, which is pretty impressive. This guy's just a little guy. He's got plenty of growing to do. Unfortunately, a lot of these guys are mistaken for rattlesnakes and killed because of his appearance, but you know, it doesn't take much of a rocket scientist to find out that that does not have a rattle on it. So it's not a rattlesnake. So in this area, all venomous snakes have rattles except for the rare coral snake. But yeah, what an awesome, awesome snake. Awesome country too. Look at this spectacular backdrop here. We've got this escarpment and great place for mountain lions and bears and just been a great experience checking out the reptiles of New Mexico. Well, we're going to put this guy in his little house as well. Believe it or not, I found this snake denning with our Red Racer coach whip. So, I'm going to pop him down here. Just have a quick last look at him. And uh, he should work out where he's going. Haha, <laughs> there he goes down into the depths. Pretty amazing, you know. I, I, uh, I was looking the other day and I came across a bull snake and I was, I was trying to coax him out from under his rock and a garter snake came out, so... G'day, I'm Corey Wild. Here we are, 
Hollywood, California. It's time to go on a wildlife adventure. These Hollywood Hills, believe it or not, they're actually cougars live up here, bobcats, rattlesnakes, coyotes, raccoons, and a bunch of other different wildlife. Pretty interesting stuff considering we're in the middle of the city. So there's a little cave that's going in here and there's lots of sticks, a heap of sticks. They wouldn't get here by themselves, so something's built a nest in here. And it looks like a rodent. So we have a rodents going in and out of a place like this. This is where you could find a, a rattlesnake. And that's what we're looking for. But you want to be careful poking your hands around in some place. Good thing about rattlesnakes is, if there's one in here, hopefully, it'll let me know. Start rattling. This is also a prime place where a rattlesnake would go during the day when it gets too hot. Now they come out in the morning and heat up and then when they get too hot they'll move into cooler places like this to regulate their temperature as they're basically solar powered but if a snake actually stays out in the sun too long it can overheat and die and a lot of people don't actually realise that. So having snakes in direct sunlight for long periods of time or if it gets too hot they can actually die. Look at that, that's a cool snake stick. A big part of me would love to find a big fat rattlesnake and another part of me would be happy to find nothing at all. That part's probably common sense. A little bit hot during the day right now at the moment so we've moved into a bit of a shady area have a look around and you wouldn't believe it right there is something really cool oh. look at that hiding in the leaves there now he's just sitting there and he's thinking I'm camouflage Corey can't see me if I just stand real if I just sit really still my camouflage will save me once a snake realizes that its cover's been blown, then it'll it'll usually either defend itself or try and make an escape. So we're just gonna see what his temperament's like. And look at that. He knows something's going on now. He can't quite work out what's happening. The ground's suddenly moving. Alright, now he's rattling. Now we know something's going on. You don't bring your snake hook, find a snake. I totally don't believe in using tongs. You see a lot of shows these days with the snakes and they're using the tongs. And they're just like bang, rough handling the snake. Putting a lot of pressure on its internal organs and its spine. It's not really good. And you know, it's just one of those things, you know. Anyone can, anyone can grab a snake with a pair of tongs. It's, and, and, and it's not real good for the snake either. And of course, what's your first natural reaction if I come along and just grab you by the back of the neck? It's going to be to strike out. Whereas if we're slow and gentle, there's a good chance that we won't stress the animal out as much. I'm going to come around the other side here and pull him out that way. I want to make this stick at least a little bit longer than the snake. Can you hear that? That's awesome. Just going a million miles an hour. So this snake's actually a lot a lot older than I thought it was. I thought it was just a little juvenile one year. And you can see he's got his tongue there flicking out. And he's got those heat sensing pits and if too much heat or temperature changes just near his face, he'll strike. Come on, buddy. I'm just being really slow and really gentle. Take my time. Obviously, you wouldn't want to get bitten by something like this. And the way that they sit in the leaves, unfortunately, a lot of people's dogs get bit because the dogs 
pick up the scent of the snake, they go over to have a look at it and wacko right on the nose. These little snakes, you know, one to two foot long, they're probably the most dangerous to handle. So, touch wood. And believe it or not, the bigger snakes, five to six feet in length, it takes a lot longer for the head to actually come back up to the tail if you, if you tail a snake. But these little guys, they're so quick that they can get their head the shorter amount of distance, just a lot less reaction time. So these little ones are really fiddly and super dangerous. He's slowly realizing that, you know, if I was gonna eat him, I probably would have done it by now. So he's, he's slowing that rattle down. With the tail, you can see there he's rattling. It has, it's kind of hard to see, one, two, three. It actually has five or six sections. And that tells me that this snake is over a couple of years old. And each time that they shed, they can add an extra segment to that tail. Now, depending on how much they eat, how fast they grow and where they live will determine on how often they shed their skin. Because when he grows faster, then he'll need to shed his skin. Another thing with these rattlesnakes as well is that the, the forked tongue is jet black with a bit of pink on the end, but I don't know, it's one of those snakes, if you have a close look at a rattlesnake's tongue, it's just jet black and it's, uh, it's a little bit creepy. But that helps him pick up the scent particles and if he's on the trail of something, the, le the left side of the fork picks up a stronger scent, the snake will actually turn left. And if it's on the right side, he'll actually go to the right. What he's actually done is he's found himself a nice little spot in the leaves. And another thing they'll do is, if there's a track where rodents come past regularly, the snakes will pick up that scent. They'll park there and just wait. And usually at night time, the rodents will come out and then he'll just wait, wacko, follow it around. And the, the, the venom actually starts the digestion period for him as soon as the snake bites the mouse. Or gopher, they also love to eat squirrels. Obviously it would have to be a bigger rattler. He's a little beauty, isn't he? Have a look at him. To think that a, you know, two foot snake can curl up into a you know, smaller than a tennis ball and just sit there. It's quite amazing. Don't look at me, look at the cameraman. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's rattling in my hand. How cool is that? Wow, look at that. So he's got six segments on his tail and it's hollow. They're all hollow. Makes the coolest sound. Yeah? See, that he cued. He was on cue. <laughs> he's a performer, true performer. So that's a, that's a decent sort of sound, isn't it? You'd hear that from a while, a, a good distance away. So when you're walking through the bush, if you're making a lot of vibration on the ground, the snake can pick that up. And of course, the snake just doesn't want to get trodden on. So that's, that's why it's evolved to having this warning system. Because that, that'd be like you or I being trodden on by an elephant as a size ratio. So he just doesn't want to get trodden on. So, if you do get a snake in your yard, call the council, call the Parks and Wildlife, call somebody to come and have it removed. It's not fair on the snake, you know. Obviously you don't, you don't want to put yourself in danger or get bitten by it, but you can call somebody to come and remove it. You don't have to kill everything. There's enough creatures going extinct without us intentionally killing them all the time. Just uh, our presence being here puts enough pressure on a lot of species. So these, these rattlesnakes are nocturnal hunters. 
and he's got vertical pupils and he sees very well in the night compared to us. So what we're going to do here is give you a close up look at his rattle. Now if I just get him in the right position, this is a little tricky. Tricky and very fiddly. Look at that rattle go. See what I was saying about when you grab them by the neck, they get cranky. Obviously, I wouldn't like it either, so I'm just going to put him back. I don't want to mess with him too much. He's been a pretty good snake. He hasn't striked once. He's rattled. He's let us know he's here. And it would be a perfect opportunity for anybody that had a snake encounter in their yard to call somebody and get it removed. Awesome stuff. There he goes on his way back into the bush. Ah, oh, check it out. Look at this awesome snake. Isn't it beautiful? I've been cruising around New Mexico checking out their reptiles. This is one of the guys that I found. The locals call him a red racer. He's from the Coach Whip family. And he's a fast moving daytime diurnal snake. And believe it or not, these guys will actually eat other little snakes, including rattlesnakes. And they'll eat birds. And they'll also eat rodents. Believe it or not, they also den with other snakes. I actually found this guy living in the same hole as his buddy, the bull snake, which we'll have a look at shortly. But you can see he's an awesome climber. <laughs> and it's, it's just amazing coming to these new places and finding these awesome new species. One of their defenses that they do have actually is they can excrete a musk musky smell which is a little on the nose a bit like tree snakes do but uh, have a look at that beautiful red pink coloration there hey buddy so what we're gonna do is we'll take this guy and we'll uh, head over here to this spot so it's uh it's mid April now so a lot of the reptiles are coming out of hibernation in this area we found some uh, Collared, green collared dragons from the Agama family, which are kind of cool, and uh, uh, garter snakes as well. So these snakes are a semi arboreal species. They'll hunt in these trees and they'll pick off unsuspecting birds and they'll eat lizards as well. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll pop him here on this juniper. Wow, what a spectacular spot, habitat-wise, for snakes. Look at these two beauties I found earlier. And it's actually a mating pair. It's April now, and the bull snakes are mating. And I believe that they do inhabit this, this rodent hole here. Perfect. So what we're going to do is let one go down there. There he goes. Little short stumpy tail. And the other lover down the hole. 
There we go. Oh, look at that. Perfect habitat. You can see why those snakes love living here in this spectacular place. Let's go and see what else we can find. So thanks for joining us. My name's Corey Wild, and what we're going to bring to you is awesome and beautiful animals from all over the world, like this guy here. So stay tuned and subscribe. Keep it wild. I'll catch you next time.